families once found Texas as the ideal place to raise their children, the cost of living was significantly lower. There was numerous real estate options that were still very affordable. The crime rate was low and there was access to exceptional schools throughout the state of Texas. However, Texas has changed dramatically over the last several years. And in this video, we're going to discuss why so many people are leaving the state of Texas. I personally am looking for a home and highly considering relocating to a completely different state. And we're going to find out why and where I'm considering making that move. So in this video, we're going to discuss the main reasons people are leaving the state of Texas. So stay tuned. Guys, my name is Richard Soto, a local real estate broker in the state of Texas. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button as we do weekly videos discussing everything there is to know about living in the Lone Star State, whether it's good or bad, I keep it 100 on our VIP Realty channel. So we're about to grab a quick lunch before we dive in to the many reasons thousands of people are leaving Texas each and every month. Okay, so the pirate is telling me another reason people leave the great state of Texas, and that is going to be crime. Texas is definitely not the safest state in the United States. So most people want to choose a state where they're going to feel where they're going to feel safe and secure. And some people just don't, for whatever reason, feel that safe in the state of Texas. That's why they relocate to other areas. Okay, so not only is crime a concern, but violent crime is a concern in Texas. As a matter of fact, it was recently ranked by the FBI as the 11th most dangerous state. So if you reside in Texas, it's good that we are able to carry a concealed weapon. Or if you're like me, you just put those hate makers on somebody if they try to enter your personal space or put their hands on you. Now, I'm not condoning fighting, guys. I'm only joking. My uncle owns Round One Boxing in Fort Worth, Texas, so that's part of my little spill is the boxing. Unfortunately, it's not comical that Texas crime is starting to rise. The national average for reported violent crimes is 334 per 100,000 residents. This information took violent crime, aggravated assault, robbery, and homicide into account. More concerning is that 115,000 crimes were committed in 2021, of which a staggering 2,000 were homicides. Okay, guys, another reason why people leave the great state of Texas, and one of the main reasons that I like to go on vacation quite often is going to be the landscape. I don't care what anybody says. In general, or at least the majority of Texas is very flat. I call it the concrete jungle. Yes, I understand there's parts of El Paso and other parts of the state that do have mountains, canyons, things like that. But overall, in the major cities, such as the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, where the majority of the population reside, especially people that move into the state of Texas, those are the cities where they'll probably end up calling home and it's just a boring landscape, okay? We've assisted, I've lost count, how many Californians and New Yorkers relocate to Texas in the last three years. I'm talking dozens, if not hundreds of clients. A good amount of our clients have decided to leave Texas and go back to the state of California. Look, guys, 
I mean, let's just, let's just be realistic, okay? Don't run me out of the great state of Texas. I'm a Texan, I love Texas. But I am not delusional, I am not confused, okay? We have an office here in California, which I frequent often for training, for business. And every time I come to California, it is breathtaking. I love the mountains, I love the beach, the ocean, the yachts, I love everything as far as the landscape goes that California has to offer. There is no comparison. I know we have Galveston, but let's, let's come on. Let's be realistic. We have some lakes. We have the San Antonio River Walk, okay? There's just no comparison. As far as the landscape, that's one of the biggest reasons why people decide to go back to the states that they came from is the landscape. They're like, geez almighty, there is nothing to look at except weeds and dead grass. Maybe not to that extent. However, I'm realistic. The Texas landscape compared to states such as California, Colorado, is definitely, definitely sorely lacking. And I can see why someone would want to go back home if that's the scenery that they've been accustomed to. Okay guys, another reason people are leaving the state of Texas, and that's because it's becoming overcrowded. And I'm talking about in every area of the city, I feel there's hundreds and thousands of people more than ever before. Well, I don't think that, it's a fact. So whenever I go grocery shopping, or if I go to the mall, if I'm at the gas station, everywhere there is crowds of people. And the reason that is so many people have flocked to the great state of Texas because of the booming economy, so many job opportunities, so people wanna take advantage of our economy. That's why so many people have moved to Texas and that's why it's overcrowded. With the growth in the job market, Texas acquired over 170,000 new residents between July 2020 and July 2021. Texas comes in first with the number of Fortune 500 companies moving their headquarters to Texas. Texas governor says Texas has become the country's economic engine room. The downside of this is the increase in population puts further strain on public services in Texas, which were already strained under the load. Further, the metropolitan areas have become so much busier and irritations such as parking and traffic are less resident friendly than before. Okay guys, obviously you know I'm not in Texas. I'm at Seaport Village right here in downtown San Diego. Ran into Michael, a fellow Texan, and Michael has a lot of interesting thoughts and things to say. He, he heard us talking about the great state of Texas, so he came over and spoke to us. Michael, how long did you live in Texas? I lived there for about 10 years. 10 years. How did you end up in sunny California? Well, I enlisted in the, in the Marine Corps and they uh, moved me over here. Got you. So how long <clears throat> have you been here in California? About 13 years. Is there any way you would move back to Texas? Uh, let's see. Sunny San Diego, beaches, no chance in hell. <laughs> okay, okay, I, you know what? I, I, could, I could see that, guys. The view of the harbor, the yachts, Coronado Bridge, it is absolutely breathtaking. The weather is exceptional. What makes California residents, or what makes Texas residents when they come to California not wanna go back? What do you like so much about California more than Texas? Well, I like the I like the um, temperatures out here. You know, climate control. In out in Texas, it, it gets ungodly hot. True. Here in San Diego, the t temperatures are like uh, 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 along the the at least along the shorelines is always around 70 degrees, 80 wow. degrees. <laughs> around this time in Texas, or at least where, where I was, where I lived, was at, at at this time at least 100 plus. Right. No, he's absolutely right. And a lot of the videos, guys, you know I keep it 100. One thing I despise about the great state of Texas is the humidity, July and August heat. It's, it's unbearable. And that is why we opened up offices in California, Michael, so I can escape in those months and come to this particular office. Now, California is beautiful. Mountains, the ocean, perfect weather, friendly people. However, that comes with a big cost. Is the cost of living here worth what you get? Absolutely. You know, although the cost of living in Texas is significantly lower, right? You know, for all the luxury that you get here, I mean, uh, if you wanted to go to the beach, you'd have to go down to the Gulf of Mexico. 
And we were, I, I wouldn't even consider that a beach, just being up front. <laughs> well, technically it's considered a, more of a harbor, if you will. So there's no way we can get Michael back to the great state of Texas? Well, I can always go back if I'm paid. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, just to, sum, just to summarize it, again, as I stated earlier, we've helped hundreds of people relocate from California to Texas. And I'm not saying half or 20%, but a small portion always end up going back, whether it's California, Colorado. Texas does have some issues with the heat, with the landscape. It's just a fact, okay? But if you want to live in California like Michael, you're definitely going to have to pay for it because the cost of living in California compared to Texas is significant. But if you can afford it, who doesn't want to live in paradise? Michael, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, guys, having a quick breakfast before we get to our next topic. I'm not going to lie to you. I understand why California residents tend to go back and leave Texas to come right back to the great state of California. There's a lot to like. It's absolutely beautiful, enjoying the stunning views of the mounds, the Coronado Bridge. However, this small, small breakfast with coffee is probably going to run me like $80. So if the cost of living definitely has any impact on you and your family, I see why the majority stay in Texas. Just wrapped up speaking to Michael, a lifelong Texas resident who relocated to California with the military. He refuses to go back to Texas. And guys, let me just be completely transparent. I have been in California numerous times in the last month and a half, and I personally have been looking for a home right here in San Diego. I love San Diego. I love the scenery. I love the ocean. I love the weather. I love the mountains. It is beautiful right here in California. So does it make sense that a lifelong Texas resident like myself would ever leave the great state of Texas? Oh, I'm probably going to get a lot of crap and flack in the comments as I have in the past. Anytime, God forbid, I keep it a hundred and say anything negative about our great state. However, my issues with Texas mainly are the weather and the landscape for the majority of the state. It gets very hot, very humid. I really don't like Texas summers. And quite frankly, when I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, San Antonio for our VIP royalty offices, there's not much to look at. Austin is probably going to be the nicest out of all those particular cities in regards to the landscape, but you can't compare it to the mountains, the ocean, the beaches. It's hard to compare. However, there's a lot, a lot to love in regards to living in the great state of Texas. Cost of living, friendly people. They're, guys, it's tough, it's tough. I can say this, if people can afford to live in California and they have the income to sustain a good quality of life and not stress over the extremely high mortgages. Just wrapped up breakfast, ran me about $70 for a very small breakfast. If people can afford to sustain that lifestyle, I don't see them leaving to Texas. However, when you're a lifelong Texan like myself, it would be hard for me to ever leave the state do I plan on coming to California very frequently? Absolutely. Would I ever leave the great state of Texas permanently and on a full-time basis? Eh, I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, guys, another reason that people decide to leave the great state of Texas is going to be the climate and the weather. If you've watched any of my previous pros and cons videos, whether it's Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex, my biggest con with our great state of Texas is the summer heat. It is unbearable. It is brutal. I can't deal with it. I literally 
perspire and sweat just walking to the car from the grocery store. So for a lot of people that recently relocated to Texas, a lot of times they decide to move back to Colorado, back to California, because they cannot deal with the Texas summer heat. In addition to that, Texas is prone to natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, hell. So the weather in Texas can definitely be brutal if you're not used to it. In the year 2000, there were 80 dangerous hot days with a prediction of 113 by 2030 and 131 by 2050. Four out of the 15 hottest cities in the U.S. are in Texas. This ranking is based on a number of days that the temperature exceeds 90 degrees. The consequence of dramatic temperature rise is the dew point is rising and making Texas more humid. In such extreme heat, it becomes unbearable to be outdoors and mosquito season lasts even longer. Okay, moving on to the next reason why people might leave the great state of Texas, or not might, do leave the great state of Texas, and that is because pollution is definitely an issue in the great state of Texas. As a matter of fact, Texas is ranked number one in regards to the most polluted state. Obviously, we have less regulations, which makes Texas very business friendly, which I love and appreciate. However, it also might cause some concern. Texas has relaxed laws regarding setting up industry, resulting in a dramatic increase in toxic emissions. Many industries pump toxic substance into Texas waters, and in 2020, this amounted to a staggering 16.7 million pounds. Many of these substances are found in drinking water and breast milk. Texas is the world's number one greenhouse gas emitter. The Permian Basin in West Texas emitted 200 million tons which are 25% more than the gas field in Russia, which ranked as the second biggest greenhouse gas producer. Given the boom in manufacturing industry in Texas, this trend is set to continue, which is very unfortunate. Another reason is because the property in Texas has become much more expensive than it once was. We get calls, especially from our California clients, where they believe they can still purchase and acquire a brand new construction home on a large lot for $350,000. And I'm kind of shocked that a lot of people think that about Texas because that hasn't been the case for a very, very, very long time. If you're going to relocate to Texas, housing prices and the cost of living overall has gone up dramatically, especially over the last three years. So when clients think they're going to purchase a large home at a massive discount, it's just not gonna happen. The cost of housing is one of the most important considerations for state residents. House prices in Texas have been considered very affordable. This scenario is changing and with the influx of new Texas residents, supply and demand have affected the property's price. The house appreciating value is steadily climbing. Certain sought after areas have made the, the metropolitan cities in Texas one of the fastest growing real estate markets. The national increase in house prices is around 18%, but it's nearly 20% in Texas. Over five years, the cost of buying a home in Texas has increased by nearly 64%. Staying on the topic of real estate, Texas also charges high property taxes. Although Texas has always been considered an affordable place to live, the truth is that even though the cost of living is low, property taxes are extremely high compared to other states. Texas ranks 45th out of 51. Texas is the most disaster prone state in the U.S. and has experienced 360 noteworthy disasters since 1953. In 2021, more than 200 earthquakes of three plus or more magnitude hit Texas. And according to scientists, the oil industry has a lot to do with this. Most earthquakes happen in oil mining areas. The sludge these companies put back into the ground is one of the major causes. Tornadoes also wreak havoc in Texas. Texas is regarded as having the most tornadoes and the number of tornadoes appears to be increasing yearly. Although Texas does not get hit by hurricanes every year, on average, one hurricane batters the Gulf Coast once every three years. Wildfires often run rift through Texas and in 2022, 371 individual fires burned nearly 211,000 acres of ground. Okay, moving on to the next reason people leave the state of Texas, and that is going to be public education. As most of you know, I have two young boys in school, elementary and high school, and it is imperative that my family receive exceptional public education, and I'm very blessed that they do. Texas does offer 
numerous exceptional school districts throughout the great state of Texas. However, Texas isn't in the top in regards to public education like other states. Although Texas is not at the bottom of the pile when it comes to education, it does rate below average taking 34th place in education standards and results. The scoring takes into account higher education and pre-K through 12th grade. For parents with school going children, this could be a good enough reason to relocate to a state with a greater emphasis on education. Okay, moving on to the next topic, which is going to be traffic and transport. If you reside in the great state of Texas and you've relocated from a city such as New York, Chicago, or other parts of the country that are extremely walkable, you're going to have issues in Texas because it's not a very walkable state. Interstate travel is absolutely ridiculous. Anytime I have to travel from the DFW Metroplex to our Houston, San Antonio, or Austin offices, it's going to be a very, very long drive. In addition to that, as we stated earlier, it's going to be a very boring drive because the landscape is horrific. So long distances, you must have a car. In addition to that, Texas has grown so fast that regardless if you're on a freeway, a back road, a side road, you are going to run into a ton of traffic. You are not going to get through the state of Texas very fast because we are growing so quickly. So with more people brings more cars, more transportation issues, more roads being constructed and being rebuilt. So traffic congestion, definitely an issue. Never mind the fact that a lot of Texas drivers can't drive. They're going 45, 55 on the passing lane, AKA hammer lane, and they're just ruining the flow of traffic. I know in numerous comments on our videos, a lot of people say that it's the newcomers that are coming to Texas that are causing the traffic jams and they don't know how to drive. I've lived in Texas my entire life. And people in Texas haven't been able to drive very well long before the influx of all these people moving to our great state. Serious road accidents are also on the rise. Texas is the state with the most fatal road accidents in 2022. The road accident statistics are worrying. Thir over 3,600 deaths from traffic accidents only from January to June 2022. In 2021, there were 1.56 deaths for every 100 miles traveled. 4% up from 2020. The 2021 annual death toll rose to almost 4,500, representing a 15% increase from 2020. In 2021, there are almost 1,600 serious accidents on the road in Texas, resulting in nearly 20,000 drivers and passengers sustaining life-changing injuries and trauma. Drunk driving is the main reason of road accidents, followed by speeding and distracted drivers. Rural dwellers contributed to 51% of these accidents, this is attributed to the vast distances between rural towns and cities. You see that, guys? That is literally how many people can guard me on a basketball court. Zero. In addition to that, that's how much competition I have in the great state of Texas in regards to real estate. I am the king of Texas in regards to real estate. There is no question about it. Anyway, guys. California offers great landscape, beautiful beaches, magnificent mountains, breathtaking views. The weather is absolutely perfect. However, you already know, baby. I was Texas born and raised. I ain't going nowhere. Montego Bay. If I take the job, bet I get it done. I, get it done. I said it before, I'm a one-on-one. -on -one. I just caught some ones, only wearing ones. Do it, do it.